Faction T4 German, pronounced was a post-war name for mass murder through involuntary euthanasia in Nazi Germany. The name T4 is an abbreviation of Tiergartenstrasse 4, a street address of the Chancellery Department set up in the spring of 1940, in the Berlin borough of Tiergarten, which recruited and paid personnel associated with T4. Certain German physicians were authorized to select patients deemed incurably sick, after most critical medical examination," and then administer to them a "...mercy death," natented. In October 1939 Adolf Hitler signed a "...euthanasia note," backdated to 1 September 1939 which authorized his physician Karl Brandt and Reichsleiter Philipp Buhler to implement the program. The killings took place from September 1939 until the end of the war in 1945. From 275,000 to 300,000 people were killed at extermination centers in psychiatric hospitals in Germany and Austria, occupied Poland and the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, now the Czech Republic. The number of victims was originally recorded as 70,273, but this number has been increased by the discovery of victims listed in the archives of former East Germany. About half of those killed were taken from church-run asylums, often with the approval of the Protestant or Catholic authorities of the institutions. The Holy See announced on 2 December 1940 that the policy was contrary to the natural and positive divine law and that, "...the direct killing of an innocent person because of mental or physical defects is not allowed." But the declaration was not upheld by some Catholic authorities in Germany. In the summer of 1941, protests were led in Germany by Bishop von Galen, whose intervention led to the strongest, most explicit and most widespread protest movement against any policy since the beginning of the Third Reich. According to Richard J. Evans, several reasons have been suggested for the program, including eugenics, compassion, reducing suffering, racial hygiene, economy and pressure on the welfare budget. Physicians in German and Austrian asylums continued many of the practices of Action T4 until the defeat of Germany in 1945, in spite of its official cessation in August 1941. The informal continuation of the policy led to 93,521 beds emptied by the end of 1941. Technology developed under Action T4 was taken over by the medical division of the Reich Interior Ministry, particularly the use of lethal gas to kill large numbers of people, along with the personnel who had participated in the development of the technology and later participated in Operation Reinhard. The technology and personnel developed were instrumental in implementing the Holocaust. The program was authorized by Hitler, but the killings have since come to be viewed as murders in Germany. The number of people killed was about 200,000 in Germany and Austria, with about 100,000 victims in other European countries. <inaudible> <inaudible> Background At the beginning of the 20th century, the sterilization of people carrying what were considered to be hereditary defects and in some cases those exhibiting what was thought to be hereditary antisocial. Behavior, was a respectable field of medicine. Canada, Denmark, Switzerland and the U.S. had passed laws enabling coerced sterilization. Studies conducted in the 1920s ranked Germany as a country that was unusually reluctant to introduce sterilization legislation. In his book Mein Kampf 1924, Hitler wrote that one-day racial hygiene will appear as a deed greater than the most victorious wars of our present bourgeois era. In July 1933, Law for the Prevention of Hereditarily Diseased Offspring", prescribed compulsory sterilization for people with conditions thought to be hereditary, such as schizophrenia, epilepsy, Huntington's chorea and imbecility. Sterilization was also legalized for chronic alcoholism and other forms of social deviance. The law was administered by the Interior Ministry under Wilhelm Frick through special hereditary health courts which examined the inmates of nursing homes, asylums, prisons, aged care homes and special schools, to select those to be sterilized. It is estimated that 360,000 people were sterilized under this law between 1933 and 1939. The policy and research agenda of racial hygiene and eugenics were promoted by Emil Kraepelin. 
The eugenic sterilization of persons diagnosed with and viewed as predisposed to schizophrenia was advocated by Eugen Bleuler, who presumed racial deterioration because of mental and physical cripples in his textbook of psychiatry. The more severely burdened should not propagate themselves. If we do nothing but make mental and physical cripples capable of propagating themselves, and the healthy stocks have to limit the number of their children because so much has to be done for the maintenance of others, if natural selection is generally suppressed, then unless we will get new measures our race must rapidly deteriorate. Within the Nazi administration, the idea of including in the program people with physical disabilities had to be expressed carefully, given that one of the most powerful figures of the regime, Joseph Goebbels, had a deformed right leg. After 1937 the acute shortage of labor in Germany arising from rearmament, meant that anyone capable of work was deemed to be useful, and thus exempted from the law and the rate of sterilization declined. The term, Action T4, is a post-war coining. Contemporary German terms included euthanasia and natented merciful death. The T4 program stemmed from the Nazi party policy of racial hygiene. A belief that the German people needed to be cleansed of racial enemies, which included anyone confined to a mental health facility and people with simple physical disabilities. <laughs> <laughs> Implementation Karl Brandt, personal doctor to Hitler and Hans Lammers, the head of the Reich Chancellery, testified after the war that Hitler had told them as early as 1933 when the sterilization law was passed, that he favored the killing of the incurably ill but recognized that public opinion would not accept this. In 1935, Hitler told the leader of Reich doctors, Gerhard Wagner, that the question could not be taken up in peacetime. Such a problem could be more smoothly and easily carried out in war. He wrote that he intended to radically solve the problem of the mental asylums in such an event. Action T4 began with a trial case in late 1938. Hitler instructed Brandt to evaluate a family's petition for the mercy killing of their son who was blind, had physical and developmental disabilities. The child, born near Leipzig and eventually identified as Gerhard Kreschmar, was killed in July 1939. Hitler instructed Brandt to proceed in the same manner in all similar cases. On the 18th of August 1939, three weeks after the killing of the boy, the Reich Committee for the Scientific Registering of Hereditary and Congenital Illnesses was established. It was to register sick children or newborns identified as defective. The secret killing of infants began in 1939 and increased after the war started. By 1941, more than 5,000 children had been killed. Hitler was in favor of killing those whom he judged to be Lebensunwertes Leben life unworthy of life. In a 1939 conference with Leonardo Conti, Reich Health Leader and State Secretary for Health in the Interior Ministry and Hans Lammers, Chief of the Reich Chancellery, a few months before the euthanasia decree, Hitler gave as examples the mentally ill who he said could only be bedded on sawdust or sand because they perpetually dirtied themselves and put their own excrement into their mouths. This issue, according to the Nazi regime, assumed new urgency in wartime. After the invasion of Poland, Hermann Fanmüller said, Fur mich ist die Vorstellung untragbar, das Beste, Bluhende Jugenden der Front ihr Leben lassen muss, damit verblichen a soziale und unverantwortlich antisoziale ein Gesichertes dessen haben, it is unbearable to me that the flower of our youth must lose their lives at the front, while that feeble-minded and asocial element can have a secure existence in the asylum. Fanmüller advocated killing by a gradual decrease of food, which he believed was more merciful than poison injections. The German eugenics movement had an extreme wing even before the Nazis came to power. As early as 1920, Alfred Hotch and Karl Binding advocated killing people whose lives were unworthy of life. Lebensunwertes Leben. Darwinism was interpreted by them as justification of the demand for beneficial genes and eradication of the harmful ones. Robert Lifton wrote. The argument went that the best young men died in war, causing a loss to the Volk of the best available genes. The genes of those who did not fight the worst genes then proliferated freely, accelerating biological and cultural degeneration. 
The advocacy of eugenics in Germany gained ground after 1930, when the depression was used to excuse cuts in funding to state mental hospitals, creating squalor and overcrowding. Many German eugenicists were nationalists and antisemites, who embraced the Nazi regime with enthusiasm. Many were appointed to positions in the health ministry and German research institutes. Their ideas were gradually adopted by the majority of the German medical profession, from which Jewish and communist doctors were soon purged. During the 1930s the Nazi party had carried out a campaign of propaganda in favor of euthanasia. The National Socialist Racial and Political Office NSRPA produced leaflets, posters and short films to be shown in cinemas, pointing out to Germans the cost of maintaining asylums for the incurably ill and insane. These films included The Inheritance Das Erb, 1935, The Victim of the Past Opfer der Vergangenheit, 1937, which was given a major premiere in Berlin and was shown in all German cinemas, and I Accuse Ich Klage and, 1941, which was based on a novel by Helmuth Unger, a consultant for Child Euthanasia. <laughs> Killing of children In mid-1939 Hitler authorized the creation of the Reich Committee for the Scientific Registering of Serious Hereditary and Congenital Illnesses Reichsoschuss zur Wissenschaftlichen Erfassung Erb und Anlagebedingter Schwerer Leiden, headed by Dr. Karl Brandt, his physician, and administered by Herbert Linden of the Interior Ministry as well as SS Oberführer Victor Brack. Brandt and Buhler were authorized to approve applications to kill children in relevant circumstances, though Buhler left the details to subordinates such as Brack and saw Oberfuhr Werner Blankenberg. Extermination centers were established at six existing psychiatric hospitals Bernberg, Brandenburg, Grafeneck, Hadamar, Hartheim, and Sonnenstein. 1,000 children under the age of 17 were killed at the institutions M. Spiegelgrund and Guching in Austria. They played a crucial role in developments leading to the Holocaust. As a related aspect of the medical and scientific basis of this program, the Nazi doctors took thousands of brains from euthanasia victims for research. From August 1939, the Interior Ministry registered children with disabilities, requiring doctors and midwives to report all cases of newborns with severe disabilities. The guardian consent element soon disappeared. Those to be killed were identified as all children under three years of age in whom any of the following serious hereditary diseases were suspected, idiocy and Down syndrome especially when associated with blindness and deafness, microcephaly, hydrocephaly, malformations of all kinds, especially of limbs, head, and spinal column, and paralysis, including spastic conditions. The reports were assessed by a panel of medical experts, of whom three were required to give their approval before a child could be killed. The ministry used deceit when dealing with parents or guardians, particularly in Catholic areas, where parents were generally uncooperative. Parents were told that their children were being sent to special sections, where they would receive improved treatment. The children sent to these centers were kept for assessment for a few weeks and then killed by injection of toxic chemicals, typically phenol, their deaths were recorded as pneumonia. Autopsies were usually performed and brain samples were taken to be used for medical research. Post-mortem examinations apparently helped to ease the consciences of many of those involved, giving them the feeling that there was a genuine medical purpose to the killings. The most notorious of these institutions in Austria was M. Spiegelgrund, where from 1940 to 1945, 789 children were killed by lethal injection, gas poisoning and physical abuse. Children's brains were preserved in jars of formaldehyde and stored in the basement of the clinic and in the private collection of Heinrich Gross, one of the institution's directors, until 2001, when the Second World War began in September 1939, less rigorous standards of assessment and a quicker approval process were adopted. Older children and adolescents were included and the conditions covered came to include Various borderline or limited impairments in children of different ages, culminating in the killing of those designated as juvenile delinquents. Jewish children could be placed in the net primarily because they were Jewish, and at one of the institutions, a special department was set up for minor Jewish Aryan half-breeds. More pressure was placed on parents to agree to their children being sent away. Many parents suspected what was happening, especially when it became apparent that institutions for children with disabilities were being systematically cleared of their charges and refused consent. 
The parents were warned that they could lose custody of all their children and if that did not suffice, the parents could be threatened with call-up for labor duty. By 1941, more than 5,000 children had been killed. The last child to be killed under Action T4 was Richard Jen on 29 May 1945 in the Children's Ward of the Kaufborner Sea State Hospital in Bavaria, Germany, more than three weeks after U.S. Army troops had occupied the town. <laughs> Killing of adults Invasion of Poland Brandt and Buhler developed plans to expand the program of euthanasia to adults. In July 1939 they held a meeting attended by Conti and Professor Werner Haidt, head of the SS Medical Department. This meeting agreed to arrange a national register of all institutionalized people with mental illnesses or physical disabilities. The first adults with disabilities to be killed en masse by the Nazi regime were Poles. After the invasion on 1 September 1939, adults with disabilities were shot by the SS men of Einsatzkommando 16, Selbschitz and E.K. Einmann under the command of SS Sturmbannführer Rudolf Trager, with overall command by Reinhard Heydrich, during the genocidal Operation Tannenberg. All hospitals and mental asylums of the Wartheland were emptied. The region was incorporated into Germany and earmarked for resettlement by Volksdeutsch following the German conquest of Poland. In the Danzig now Gdansk area, some 7,000 Polish patients of various institutions were shot and 10,000 were killed in the Gdynia area. Similar measures were taken in other areas of Poland destined for incorporation into Germany. The first experiments with the gassing of patients were conducted in October 1939 at Fort 7 in Posen, occupied Poznan, where hundreds of prisoners were killed by means of carbon monoxide poisoning, in an improvised gas chamber developed by Dr. Albert Widman, chief chemist of the German Criminal Police Kripo. In December 1939, Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler witnessed one of these gassings, ensuring that this invention would later be put to much wider uses. The idea of killing adult mental patients soon spread from occupied Poland to adjoining areas of Germany, probably because Nazi Party and SS officers in these areas were most familiar with what was happening in Poland. These were also the areas where Germans wounded from the Polish campaign were expected to be accommodated, which created a demand for hospital space. The Gauleiter of Pomerania, Franz Schwede Coburg, sent 1,400 patients from five Pomeranian hospitals to undisclosed locations in occupied Poland, where they were shot. The Gauleiter of East Prussia, Eric Koch, had 1,600 patients killed out of sight. More than 8,000 Germans were killed in this initial wave of killings carried out on the orders of local officials, although Himmler certainly knew and approved of them. The legal basis for the program was a 1939 letter from Hitler, not a formal. Führer's decree, with the force of law. Hitler bypassed Conti, the health minister and his department, who might have raised questions about the legality of the program and entrusted it to Buhler and Brandt. Reich leader Buhler and Dr. Brandt are entrusted with the responsibility of extending the authority of physicians, to be designated by name, so that patients who, after a most critical diagnosis, on the basis of human judgment are considered incurable, can be granted mercy death the killings were administered by Victor Brack and his staff from Tiergartenstrasse 4, disguised as the Charitable Foundation for Cure and Institutional Care, offices which served as the front and was supervised by Buhler and Brandt. The officials in charge included Dr. Herbert Linden, who had been involved in the child killing program, Dr. Ernst Robert Grawitz, chief physician of the SS, and August Becker, an SS chemist. The officials selected the doctors who were to carry out the operational part of the program, based on political reliability as long-term Nazis, professional reputation and sympathy for radical eugenics. The list included physicians who had proved their worth in the child-killing program, such as Unger, Heinze and Hermann Fanmüller. The recruits were mostly psychiatrists, notably Professor Karl Schneider of Heidelberg, Professor Max de Krinus of Berlin and Professor Paul Nitsch from the Sonnenstein State Institution. Haid became the operational leader of the program, succeeded later by Nitsch. <laughs> <laughs> Listing of targets from hospital records 
In early October, all hospitals, nursing homes, old age homes and sanatoria were required to report all patients who had been institutionalized for five years or more, who had been committed as criminally insane, who were of non-Aryan race, or who had been diagnosed with any on a list of conditions. The conditions included schizophrenia, epilepsy, Huntington's chorea, advanced syphilis, senile dementia, paralysis, encephalitis and terminal neurological conditions generally. Many doctors and administrators assumed that the reports were to identify inmates who were capable of being drafted for labor service and tended to overstate the degree of incapacity of their patients, to protect them from labor conscription. When some institutions refused to cooperate, teams of T4 doctors or Nazi medical students visited and compiled the lists, sometimes in a haphazard and ideologically motivated way. During 1940, all Jewish patients were removed from institutions and killed. As with child inmates, adults were assessed by a panel of experts, working at the Tiergartenstrasse offices. The experts were required to make their judgments on the reports, not medical histories or examinations. Sometimes they dealt with hundreds of reports at a time. On each they marked a plus death, a life, or occasionally a, meaning that they were unable to decide. Three. Death. Verdicts condemned the person and as with reviews of children, the process became less rigorous, the range of conditions considered unsustainable grew broader and zealous Nazis further down the chain of command increasingly made decisions on their own initiative. <laughs> Gassing The first gassings in Germany proper took place in January 1940 at the Brandenburg Euthanasia Center. The operation was headed by Brack, who said, The needle belongs in the hand of the doctor. Bottled pure carbon monoxide gas was used. At trials, Brandt described the process as a major advance in medical history. Once the efficacy of the method was confirmed, it became standardized, and instituted at a number of centers across Germany under the supervision of Widman, Becker, and Christian Wirth, a Kripo officer who later played a prominent role in the extermination of the Jews as commandant of newly built death camps in occupied Poland. In addition to Brandenburg, the killing centers included Grafenek Castle in Baden-Württemberg, 10,824 dead; Schloss Hartheim near Linz in Austria, over 18,000 dead; Sonnenstein Euthanasia Center in Saxony, 15,000 dead; Bernburg Euthanasia Center in Saxony-Anhalt and Hadamar Euthanasia Center in Hesse, 14,494 dead. The same facilities were also used to kill mentally sound prisoners transferred from concentration camps in Germany, Austria and occupied parts of Poland. Condemned patients were transferred from their institutions to newly built centers in the T4 charitable ambulance buses, called the Community Patients Transport Service. They were run by teams of SS men wearing white coats, to give it an air of medical care. To prevent the families and doctors of the patients from tracing them, the patients were often first sent to transit centers in major hospitals, where they were supposedly assessed. They were moved again to special treatment centers. Families were sent letters explaining that owing to wartime regulations, it was not possible for them to visit relatives in these centers. Most of these patients were killed within 24 hours of arriving at the centers, and their bodies cremated. For every person killed, a death certificate was prepared, giving a false but plausible cause of death. This was sent to the family along with an urn of ashes random ashes, since the victims were cremated en masse. The preparation of thousands of falsified death certificates took up most of the working day of the doctors who operated the centers. During 1940, the centers at Brandenburg, Grafenek and Hartheim killed nearly 10,000 people each, while another 6,000 were killed at Sonnenstein. In all, about 35,000 people were killed in T4 operations that year. Operations at Brandenburg and Grafenek were wound up at the end of the year, partly because the areas they served had been cleared and partly because of public opposition. In 1941, however, the centers at Bernberg and Sonnenstein increased their operations, while Hartheim where Wirth and Franz Stangl were successively commandants continued as before. As a result, another 35,000 people were killed before August 1941, when the T4 program was officially shut down by Hitler. 
Even after that date, however, the centers continued to be used to kill concentration camp inmates. Eventually, some 20,000 people in this category were killed. In 1971, Gitta Sereny conducted a series of interviews with Stengel, who was in prison in Dusseldorf after having been convicted of co responsibility for killing 900,000 people as commandant of the Sobibor and Treblinka extermination camps in Poland. Stengel gave Sereny a detailed account of the operations of the T4 program based on his time as commandant of the killing facility at the Hartheim Institute. He described how the inmates of various asylums were removed and transported by bus to Hartheim. Some were in no mental state to know what was happening to them, but many were perfectly sane, and for them various forms of deception were used. They were told they were at a special clinic where they would receive improved treatment, and were given a brief medical examination on arrival. They were induced to enter what appeared to be a shower block, where they were gassed with carbon monoxide the ruse was also used at extermination camps. <laughs> Number of euthanasia victims The SS functionaries and hospital staff associated with Action T4 in the German Reich were paid from the central office at Tiergartenstrasse 4 in Berlin from the spring of 1940. The SS and police from SS Sonderkommando Lang responsible for murdering the majority of patients in the annexed territories of Poland since October 1939, took their salaries from the normal police fund, supervised by the administration of the newly formed Wartheland district, the program in Germany and occupied Poland was overseen by Heinrich Himmler. Before 2013, it was believed that 70,000 persons were murdered in the euthanasia program, but the German Federal Archives reported that research in the archives of former East Germany indicated that the number of victims in Germany and Austria from 1939 to 1945 was about 200,000 persons and that another 100,000 persons were victims in other European countries. In the German T4 centers there was at least the semblance of legality in keeping records and writing letters. In Polish psychiatric hospitals no one was left behind. Killings were inflicted using gas vans, sealed army bunkers and machine guns, families were not informed about the murdered relatives and the empty wards were handed over to the SS. <laughs> <laughs> Technology and personnel transfer to death camps After the official end of the euthanasia program in 1941, most of the personnel and high-ranking officials, as well as gassing technology and the techniques used to deceive victims, were transferred under the jurisdiction of the National Medical Division of the Reich Interior Ministry. Further gassing experiments with the use of mobile gas chambers Einsatzwagen were conducted at Soldau concentration camp by Herbert Lang following Operation Barbarossa. Lang was appointed commander of the Kelmno extermination camp in December 1941. He was given three gas vans by the RSHA, converted by the Gaubschott GmbH in Berlin and before February 1942, killed 3,830 Polish Jews and around 4,000 Romani, under the guise of resettlement. After the 1C conference, implementation of gassing technology was accelerated by Heydrich. Beginning in the spring of 1942, three killing factories were built secretly in east-central Poland. The SS officers responsible for the earlier action T4, including Wirth, Stangl and Ermfried Eberl, had important roles in the implementation of the final solution for the next two years. The first killing center equipped with stationary gas chambers modeled on technology developed under Action T4 was established at Belzec in the general government territory of occupied Poland. The decision preceded the 1C conference of January 1942 by three months. <laughs> Opposition In January 1939, Brack commissioned a paper from Professor of Moral Theology at the University of Paderborn, Joseph Mayer, on the likely reactions of the churches in the event of a state euthanasia program being instituted. Mayer, a long-standing euthanasia advocate, reported that the churches would not oppose such a program if it was seen to be in the national interest. Brack showed this paper to Hitler in July, and it may have increased his confidence that the euthanasia program would be acceptable to German public opinion. 
Notably, when Sereny interviewed Mayer shortly before his death in 1967, he denied that he formally condoned the killing of people with disabilities, but no copies of this paper are known to survive. There were those who opposed the T4 program within the bureaucracy. Lothar Kraisig, a district judge and member of the Confessing Church, wrote to Gertner protesting that the action was illegal since no law or formal decree from Hitler had authorized it. Gertner replied, If you cannot recognize the will of the Fuhrer as a source of law, then you cannot remain a judge, and had Kraisig dismissed. Hitler had a fixed policy of not issuing written instructions for policies relating to what could later be condemned by international community, but made an exception when he provided Buhler and Brack with written authority for the T4 program in his confidential letter of October 1939 in order to overcome opposition within the German state bureaucracy. Hitler told Buhler that, "...the Führer's chancellery must under no circumstances be seen to be active in this matter." The Justice Minister, Franz Gertner, had to be shown Hitler's letter in August 1940 to gain his cooperation. Exposure In the towns where the killing centers were located, many people saw the inmates arrive in buses, saw the smoke from the crematoria chimneys and noticed that the buses were returning empty. In Hadamar, ashes containing human hair rained down on the town. The T4 program was no secret. Despite the strictest orders, some of the staff at the killing centers talked about what was going on. In some cases families could tell that the causes of death in certificates were false, e.g. when a patient was claimed to have died of appendicitis, even though his appendix had been surgically removed some years earlier. In other cases, several families in the same town would receive death certificates on the same day. In May 1941, the Frankfurt County Court wrote to Gertner describing scenes in Hadamar where children shouted in the streets that people were being taken away in buses to be gassed. During 1940, rumors of what was taking place spread and many Germans withdrew their relatives from asylums and sanatoria to care for them at home, often with great expense and difficulty. In some places doctors and psychiatrists cooperated with families to have patients discharged or if the families could afford it, transferred them to private clinics beyond the reach of T4. Other doctors re-diagnosed patients so that they no longer met the T4 criteria, which risked exposure when Nazi zealots from Berlin conducted inspections. In Kiel, Professor Hans Gerhard Kreutzfeldt managed to save nearly all of his patients. Lifton listed a handful of psychiatrists and administrators who opposed the killings. Many doctors collaborated, either through ignorance, agreement with Nazi eugenicist policies, or fear of the regime. Protest letters were sent to the Reich Chancellery and the Ministry of Justice, some from Nazi Party members. The first open protest against the removal of people from asylums took place at Absberg in Franconia in February 1941, and others followed. The SD report on the incident at Absberg noted that. The removal of residents from the Ottilian home has caused a great deal of unpleasantness, and described large crowds of Catholic townspeople, among them party members, protesting against the action. Similar petitions and protests occurred throughout Austria as rumors spread of mass killings at the Hartheim Euthanasia Center and of mysterious deaths at the Children's Clinic, M. Spiegelgrund in Vienna. Anna Wodel, a nurse and mother of child with a disability, vehemently petitioned to Hermann Linden at the Reich Ministry of the Interior in Berlin to prevent her son, Alfred, from being transferred from Guking, where he lived and which also became a euthanasia center. Wodel failed and Alfred was sent to Amspiegelgrund, where he was killed on of February 1941. His brain was preserved in formaldehyde for research and stored in the clinic for 60 years. Church protests The Lutheran theologian Friedrich von Bodelschwing director of the Bethel Institution for Epilepsy at Bielefeld and Pastor Paul Gerhard Braun director of the Hoffnungstel Institution near Berlin protested. Bodelschwing negotiated directly with Brandt and indirectly with Hermann Göring, whose cousin was a prominent psychiatrist. Braun had meetings with Justice Minister Gertner, who was always dubious about the legality of the program. Gertner later wrote a strongly worded letter to Hitler protesting against it. Hitler did not read it but was told about it by Lammers. 
Bishop Theophil Worm, presiding the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Württemberg, wrote to Interior Minister Frick in March 1940 and the same month a confidential report from the Sicherheitsdienst SD in Austria, warned that the killing program must be implemented with stealth, in order to avoid a probable backlash of public opinion during the war. On 4 December 1940, Reinhold Sauter, the Supreme Church Councillor of the Württemberg State Church, complained to the Nazi Ministerial Councillor Eugen Stahel for the murders in Grafenegg Castle. Stahel said, The fifth commandment thou shalt not kill, is no commandment of God but a Jewish invention. Bishop Heinrich Wienken of Berlin, a leading member of the Caritas Association, was selected by the Fulda Episcopal Synod to represent the views of the Catholic Church in meetings with T4 operatives. In 2008, Michael Burley wrote, Wienken seems to have gone partially native in the sense that he gradually abandoned an absolute stance based on the Fifth Commandment in favor of winning limited concessions regarding the restriction of killing to complete idiots, access to the sacraments and the exclusion of ill Roman Catholic priests from these policies. Despite a decree issued by the Vatican on 2 December 1940 stating that the T4 policy was against natural and positive divine law and that, the direct killing of an innocent person because of mental or physical defects is not allowed." The Catholic Church hierarchy in Germany decided to take no further action. Incensed by the Nazi appropriation of church property in Munster to accommodate people made homeless by an air raid, in July and August 1941 the Bishop of Munster, August von Galen, gave four sermons criticizing the Nazis for arresting Jesuits, confiscating church property and for the euthanasia program. Galen sent the text to Hitler by telegram, calling on the Führer to defend the people against the Gestapo. It is a terrible, unjust and catastrophic thing when man opposes his will to the will of God. We are talking about men and women, our compatriots, our brothers and sisters. Poor unproductive people if you wish, but does this mean that they have lost their right to live? Galen's sermons were not reported in the German press but were circulated illegally as leaflets. The text was dropped by the Royal Air Force over German troops. In 2009, Richard J. Evans wrote that this was the strongest, most explicit and most widespread protest movement against any policy since the beginning of the Third Reich. Local Nazis asked for Galen to be arrested but Goebbels told Hitler that such action would provoke a revolt in Westphalia and Hitler decided to wait until after the war to take revenge. In 1986, Lifton wrote. Nazi leaders faced the prospect of either having to imprison prominent, highly admired clergymen and other protesters, a course with consequences in terms of adverse public reaction they greatly feared, or else end the program." Evans considered it, "...at least possible, even indeed probable." that the T4 program would have continued beyond Hitler's initial quota of 70,000 deaths but for the public reaction to Galen's sermon. Burley called assumptions that the sermon affected Hitler's decision to suspend the T4 program, wishful thinking, and noted that the various church hierarchies did not complain after the transfer of T4 personnel to Action Reinhard. Henry Friedlander wrote that it was not the criticism from the church but rather the loss of secrecy and general popular disquiet about the way euthanasia was implemented that caused the killing to be suspended. Galen had detailed knowledge of the euthanasia program by July 1940 but did not speak out until almost a year after Protestants had begun to protest. In 2002, Beth A. Greech Pallel wrote that, Worried lest they be classified as outsiders or internal enemies, they waited for Protestants, that is the true Germans, to risk a confrontation with the government first. If the Protestants were able to be critical of a Nazi policy, then Catholics could function as good Germans and yet be critical too. On 29 of June 1943, Pope Pius XII issued the encyclical Mysticae Corporis Christi, in which he condemned the fact that, "...physically deformed people, mentally disturbed people and hereditarily ill people have at times been robbed of their lives." In Germany. Following this, in September 1943, a bold but ineffectual condemnation was read by bishops from pulpits across Germany, denouncing the killing of the innocent and defenseless mentally handicapped and mentally ill, the incurably infirm and fatally wounded, innocent hostages and disarmed prisoners of war and criminal offenders, people of a foreign race or descent.
Topic: <laughs> Suspension of T4 killings. On 24 August 1941, Hitler ordered the suspension of the T-4 killings. After the invasion of the Soviet Union in June, many T-4 personnel were transferred to the East to begin work on the final solution to the Jewish question. The projected death total for the T-4 program of 70,000 deaths had been reached by August 1941. The termination of the T4 program did not end the killing of people with disabilities. From the end of 1941, the killing of adults and children continued less systematically to the end of the war on the local initiative of institute directors and party leaders. After the bombing of Hamburg in July 1943, occupants of old age homes were killed. In the post-war trial of Dr. Hilda Wernick, Berlin, August 1946, testimony was given that 500 old broken women who had survived the bombing of Stettin in June 1944 were euthanized at the Maseritz Oberwald Asylum. The Hartheim, Bernberg, Sonnenstein and Hardemar centers continued in use as wild euthanasia centers to kill people sent from all over Germany, until 1945. The methods were lethal injection or starvation, those employed before use of gas chambers. By the end of 1941, about 100,000 people had been killed in the T4 program. From mid-1941, concentration camp prisoners too feeble or too much trouble to keep alive were murdered after a cursory psychiatric examination under Action 14 F-13. Post-war Doctor's trial After the war a series of trials was held in connection with the Nazi euthanasia program at various places including, Dresden, Frankfurt, Graz, Nuremberg and Tübingen. In December 1946 an American military tribunal commonly called the Doctors' Trial prosecuted 23 doctors and administrators for their roles in war crimes and crimes against humanity. These crimes included the systematic killing of those deemed unworthy of life including people with mental disabilities, the people who were institutionalized mentally ill, and people with physical impairments. After 140 days of proceedings, including the testimony of 85 witnesses and the submission of 1,500 documents, in August 1947 the court pronounced 16 of the defendants guilty. Seven were sentenced to death and executed on 2 June 1948, including Brandt and Brack. The indictment read in part, 14. Between September 1939 and April 1945 the defendants Karl Brandt, Blohm, Brack, and Hoven unlawfully, willfully, and knowingly committed crimes against humanity, as defined by Article 2 of Control Council Law No. 10, in that they were principals in, accessories to, ordered, abetted, took a consenting part in, and were connected with plans and enterprises involving the execution of the so-called euthanasia program of the German Reich, in the course of which the defendants herein murdered hundreds of thousands of human beings, including German civilians, as well as civilians of other nations. The particulars concerning such murders are set forth in paragraph 9 of count 2 of this indictment and are incorporated herein by reference. Earlier, in 1945, American forces tried seven staff members of the Hadamar Killing Center for the Killing of Soviet and Polish Nationals, which was within their jurisdiction under international law, as these were the citizens of wartime allies. Hadamar was within the American zone of occupation in Germany. This was before the Allied Resolution of December 1945, to prosecute individuals for crimes against humanity. For such mass atrocities, Alphonse Klein, Karl Ruoff and Wilhelm Willig were sentenced to death and executed, the other four were given long prison sentences. In 1946, newly reconstructed German courts tried members of the Hadamar staff for the murders of nearly 15,000 German citizens at the facility. Adolf Wallmann and Ermgard Huber, the chief physician and the head nurse, were convicted. Other perpetrators August Becker, initially sentenced to three years after the war, in 1960 was tried again and sentenced to ten years in prison. He was released early due to ill health and died in 1967. Werner Blankenberg lived under an alias and died in 1957. Philip Buhler committed suicide in captivity, May 1945. 
Werner Cattell was cleared by a denazification board after World War II and was head of pediatrics at the University of Kiel. He retired early after his role in the T4 program was exposed but continued to support the killing of children with mental and physical disabilities. Leonardo Conti hanged himself in captivity, 6 October 1945. Dr. Ernst Robert Grawitz killed himself shortly before the fall of Berlin in April 1945. Dr. Herbert Linden committed suicide in 1945. Overseers of the program were initially Herbert Linden and Werner Haid. Linden was later replaced by Hermann Paul Nitsch. Dr. Fritz Krupp d. 6 April 1984, Bremen. A Nazi official in Oldenburg, Krupp was appointed the country medical officer of health in 1933. In 1935 he transferred to Berlin, where he worked as a ministerial advisor in the Division 4 health care and people care in the Ministry of the Interior. In 1939, he became assistant director. Krupp was involved in the Nazi euthanasia action T4 in 1940. He was Herbert Linden's superior and was responsible for patient transfers. Dr. Werner Haid after escaping detection for 18 years, killed himself in 1964 before being brought to trial. Dr. Heinrich Gross was tried twice. One sentence was overturned and the charges in the second trial in 2000 were dropped as a result of his dementia. He died in 2005. Lorenz Hackenholt vanished in 1945. Eric Koch served time in prison from 1950 to his death in 1986. Erwin Lambert died in 1976. Dr. Friedrich Menick died in 1947 while awaiting trial. Philip, Landgrave of Hesse, the governor of Hesse-Nassau, was tried in 1947 at Hadamar for his role in Action T4 but was sentenced only to two years. Time served. He died in 1980. Paul Nitsch was tried and executed by an East German court in 1948. Professor Karl Schneider hanged himself in his prison cell in 1946, while awaiting trial. Franz Schwede was sentenced to 10 years in prison in 1948 and was released in 1956, he died in 1960. Dr. Ernst Illing was the director of the Vienna Psychiatric Neurological Clinic for Children am Spielgrund, where he killed about 200 children, sentenced to death on 18 July 1946. Dr. Marianne Turk was a doctor at Vienna Psychiatric Neurological Clinic for Children am Spielgrund where, with Ernst Illing, she killed 200 children. She was sentenced to 10 years prison on 18 July 1946. The Ministry for State Security of East Germany stored around 30,000 files of Action T4 in their archives. Those files became available to the public only after the German reunification in 1990, leading to a new wave of research on these wartime crimes. Memorials The German National Memorial to the People with Disabilities Murdered by the Nazis was dedicated in 2014 in Berlin. It is located in the pavement of a site next to the Tiergarten Park, the location of the former villa at Tiergartenstrasse 4 in Berlin, where more than 60 Nazi bureaucrats and doctors worked in secret under the T4 program to organize the mass murder of sanatorium and psychiatric hospital patients deemed unworthy to live. See also Notes Footnotes <laughs> 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 <laughs>